Good evening and welcome to All Saints Rectory on this Tuesday evening. I hope you weren't too exhausted by the bank holiday weekend. Uh, apologies for this being a little bit late uh, today and I'm in clericals uh, simply because uh, I was attending a funeral uh, until five o'clock. It was the last one of the day. I had to come home and read through a lot of uh, papers before it got too late to provide a response and before I knew it uh, it was eight o'clock and I'd not done my Tuesday slot. Uh, there was no uh, broadcast yesterday. I tried to keep Mondays free, uh, particularly as yesterday was a bank holiday. Mondays would, in normal circumstances, be my sort of 24 hours away from ministry. Uh, it's a shame in a way because uh, the 25th of May is the day the church remembers the Venerable Bede, who is regarded as a doctor of the church. Uh, he is regarded as the father of English history and he lived in the sort of dark ages, the 7th, 8th centuries, uh, in County Durham. Well, I figured that County Durham yesterday was in the news quite enough as it was, so I decided uh, not to say anything about him then, and we'll save that up for later. Now, the funeral I did today was remarkable for a number of reasons, uh, partly because uh, the person concerned died uh, well over two months ago. It was my privilege to go to anoint him uh, by way of last rites and for whatever reason there was this very long delay and we had to conduct the preparations for the funeral over the telephone and in the end we were able to have a group call on WhatsApp. This Skype technology um, amongst uh, all of us didn't work quite well and it was very much a team effort and it was a privilege to do, uh, relatively few in chapel of course and very many dozens of people outside. Uh, it was a very, very good do. And the funeral I did last week, which was rather more in-house, uh, it was a funeral of somebody whose family is known to many of you, was also a very good do indeed, by people pulling together in the same direction at a time that's already very difficult, and actually between us producing a really rather fine result. And if we've learned to be a little bit more imaginative in the way we communicate, a little bit more considerate in terms of the way we relate to one another and that we can carry this forward to when these awful restrictions are lifted then I think the world will be a better place and the economy will recover and perhaps recover a little bit more quickly. It's also a remarkable uh, weekend in a way because despite the uh, warning of uh, stiff uh, breezes and what have you we in fact had in my view storm force winds which toppled the laburnum uh, in the churchyard at the northwest end of the churchyard. Uh, a phone call to the person that looks after our garden. Uh, a couple of hours later, uh, and a chainsaw and a van, the tree was beautifully logged up and the smaller branches, which were in leaf and in bud, have been dispersed around the churchyard. Again, teamwork. Uh, it's working very well uh, and was a considerable source of comfort to me just at the moment because I think for lots of us, and including me, that self-isolation is um, beginning to have its effect, I think. Um, probably think I'm mad enough anyway, but certainly I've noticed myself getting quite fretful. Anyway, it reminded me of a poem by one of my favourite poets, a Scotsman called George Mackay Brown. I say Scotsman, he described himself first and foremost as an Orcadian, somebody from the Orkneys. Uh, he was educated at university in Edinburgh, but his soul, his heart, was forever in the Orkney Isles, and he writes the most beautiful, descriptive, sometimes short, sometimes quite uh, percussive, sometimes quite lyrical poems. But as I reflected on the last few days before beginning this little piece to camera, I thought actually one of George Mackay's poems would be a rather splendid way to round it off. And I think it's fair to say that uh, George Mackay Brown will regard himself as, as a person of faith, uh, broadly in the Christian tradition, but of course mindful of the customs of his home soil, the Orkneys as well. So I'm going to read you a poem about Anne Bevan, sculptor, Hills, Woolcraft, Stone. Good, said God as he made the wind, the sea, the fire, the folded hills. Good, 
said the shepherd as he fleeced his flock. Good, said the wife at the hearthstone spinning wool on her wheel. Good, said the weaver as the shuttle clacked. Good, said the housewife as she folded blankets in a basket, fresh from sun and wind. Good, said the quarryman as he hewed a great stone from the mountain. Good, said the sculptor as she made her sculpture. To make things is to do well, and to do things in harmony, all trades and images cohering, is to catch time and form in their flight until all cry Gloria. Well, that to me speaks of God and people of a whole range of varieties of skill and background and temperaments getting on with doing what they're supposed to do and relating to one another in a way that is nothing but productive. And if you'd like to know where this poem comes from, it comes from George Mackay Brown's poems and the volume is called Following a Lark and it's published by John Murray. So I think that's the best that we can do, just to rub along with one another, be as honest as we dare and move in the same direction. Let's push in the same direction. Now prayers please, particularly for schools, as um, we are under, I won't say pressure from the government to open, but uh, this date of the 1st of June has been in the consciousness now for some time and of course each school is different. Some schools have large spaces, some schools like ours are fairly confined in space. Uh, there is no plan that suits all schools, no matter what their size, no matter the size of their senior management. Lots of people across the country in schools, big and small, are racking their brains to find out how education in school can be extended safely to our young people and also the people, the professional people responsible for delivering the curriculum and supporting the curriculum in whatever role they have in school. So prayers please on that, because believe me, I want us all to be able to cry Gloria at the end of this, to know that we did what we did for the right reasons and for the safety of all, which speaks of our care, the need for care for one another, which is God's commandment, because God gives us a, a commandment, which is to love one another, as I'm sure you will know. So God, the good shepherd, who is both the gate and the shepherd commands us to act in a way that leads to coherence and to everlasting peace and through which the kingdom of God will come. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this night and always. Amen.